Hello and welcome to Supernatural Lifeline Revelations. I'm your host, Prophetess TNT Tara Nicole Tarver. Today is our second segment and our continuation of our Unbother series that I'm doing with Reverend Deborah Manns. It's been absolutely amazing. If you missed the first one, you want to go back and watch it. Yes, our highly anticipated book and all of our merch is out there, even our song, because we have started a movement about you keeping your peace. So let me just quickly try to go through a real quick moment of giving you a quick recap of a few things that we talked about. Um, Reverend Deborah Manns mentioned how she had went on a 21 day fast and literally it transformed her life. And she was giving us a few steps that, that that fast gave her so she could keep her peace, finding out who she was and what she was able to hold on to and how quickly we were able to relinquish those things when we didn't have the Lord. Also, not to mention that she had been a millionaire and, and that she was you know, able to shop where she wanted, have who she wanted, and she did not have the peace of God. And once God came into her life and she understood and was willing to fast and to pray and seek his face, everything transformed. So it was such a great thing. You're going to hear from her in just a moment. Also myself, I was coming from John 14, 27, where I was saying, he says, peace I leave unto you, my own peace do I give and I'll bequeath to you. He says, not as the world giveth do I give to you. Stop allowing yourself to be irritated, agitated, disturbed, and distressed. Don't permit yourself to be cowardly or unsettled. I can't permit it, let it, or allow it. I can't tolerate being unbothered by other people. And we were talking about how people who are toxic try to pull us into their toxicity. You know, I always say, don't take me down to the cuckoo basement with you. I'm not going. No. I'm like, no, I'm not going to this place with you. I want you to be, um, as a Christian, I want you to know God gave you peace and no man can take it from you. We want you to know that you are going to have trials, but those trials only come to make you stronger. She was just talking about people that hated on us or talked about her and messaged her and, and they're, they're stalking you and all this stuff and they're trying to defame you. They're helping you. And the Bible says rejoice and be exceedingly glad in Matthew, the fifth chapter, the eighth through 11th verse. And he also tells you in Luke 26, uh, 6, 26, he says that, um, careful when all men speak well of you right so did they of the false, false prophets prophet. mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. if they're not if you're worried, trying to get everybody to like you right it's just not going to happen when yeah. you're truly called by the lord yeah. so i gave you a little quick little recap of that um my life has been one which i could have been really discouraged about if i didn't understand the calling of god in my life you know what's really really funny my mom came to visit this week mm -hmm. rev and she was so shocked like wait wait a minute like who is this person? Where, where did you come from? Because, you know, you can have a family member that doesn't know you. Right. You can have siblings and they don't know you. Yeah. You have an identical twin sister. Um, and doesn't mean she knows the person you are and what you're called to do. Right. And it's so amazing when you don't need anybody else's approval oh to be you yeah. but God. Yeah. So, Rev, if you could just like, I uh, did a little recap there for them. If you could still go on with what your 31 day fast did for you. You said sexually you became stable where you didn't need to have sex with someone. You understood the value of yourself and, and you didn't need them for that. Um, you also said you were able to block out toxic people right. and let people go. You weren't willing to engage in, in those text messages, emails. Mm -hmm. And I will say this, I know I said it in the last segment. If you look at the beginning of a text and it is diff it is uh, it's just discouraging, it's rude, negative. it's harsh, it's negative. You already know. What's going I always on. tell them, hey, I'm not going to read this. I put this under the blood. Yeah. We don't even need to talk about this. Mm -hmm. And I mean that. I let them know I'm not going to read it. I'm going to pray about it. I'm giving it to God. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm giving it to God. And that's where you helped me as a friend, too. I loved your maturity in Christ, where even though it was, it was a seemingly a crisis, Christ was in there. He's right. still who is who he is. Right. And I didn't have to let that go. And I love that because my friend, my best friend is, is unbothered and she still has to do business. She still has her children. So you still have your pastoral ship. You have to pastor your church. You still have calling. You still have vacation. You have a bi-coastal business. You're always busy doing the things of God and you don't let anyone or anything stop you from carrying on, and I love that about you. Yeah, teach us, teach us. It's it can be very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I one of so I will say this uh, in transparency. One of the things that I pray to God often mm -hmm. is to allow me to continue to feel His Spirit 
mm. on me mm. so that I'm, I don't get discouraged in mm. doing the work. What a lot of people don't really understand is that they see our glory, mm -hmm. but they don't know our story. Yeah. They don't know, you know, Oof. the days that we cried and the days we felt alone oh and the days goodness. we felt like we didn't have help and Legal there was no support and, and how people <laughs> didn't treat us the way we thought they should and how we gave and we didn't receive back and, yes. you know, yes. through all yes. of that brokenness. Yes. And, when you when you're delivered from that brokenness you still have to encourage yourself every day to mm -hmm. stay on the journey and that's really what the sense of being unbothered is about to know that it is truly 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 true in psalm 46 and 10 that though his anger be for a moment that weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning you have to find your joy every morning that is why i wake up at 3 a.m every morning mm. If I don't wake up at 3 a.m., my day is won't even start until I go into prayer, I go into worship. I have to do some kind of exercise in the house before I even leave the house because if I, I realize sometimes that if I just get up rushing, don't spend time with God, don't pray, yes. walk out the door, yes. I'm off. Off. Now, I'm glad you said that because literally even today I felt like that. We got in very late from ministering last night and we were doing a bunch of stuff. This morning it came and ran and all of a sudden I started realizing, wait a minute, mm -hmm. there's a lot of weird things happening today. And I said, ah, see, I didn't give my time. And it roots us and grounds us. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are saying, how do I get up at three? How do I get up at four? How do I get up at five? I just can't get up. You can't, you can't afford not to get up. Yeah. But tell, tell, tell someone how to get into disciplining yourself to be able to do this. Especially the first 21 days is going to be difficult for you. Right. So right now, we my the church is on the 40 days to resurrection. So we're in a season of Lent. And I gave my church so many different instructions. And part of the instructions were with the fast, there's no complaining. Mm. So no complaining for 40 days. What's that? First Corinthians 10 and 10, do all <laughs> things first without grumbling and complaining. <laughs> right. Let somebody say, I receive. <laughs> I receive. I receive. So okay. no complaining. No complaining. The second thing is no concerns. So you have no worries, no concerns. You're Second Peter one five. You're casting all your cares unto the mm, Lord, for He cares yes, for yeah. you. And what's left out of all, nothing. So you have no concerns. When you wake up every morning, the only concern you have is God. Mm -hmm. The only concern you have is Jesus. Mm -hmm. And then the three things that they're praying for: we're praying for recovery, mm -hmm. we're praying for rebuilding. And we're praying for more hope during our faith walk. Mm, so we okay. want to be hopeful because when we're hopeful, that makes our faith stronger. Yes. And one of the disciplines of waking up early is you just have to get up. Mm. There's no other way to do it. What'd you say? You can lay in the bed? No. You have to. I'm going to pray in the bed. No. You have to get up. And when you get up, you cannot mess but with I your can phone. Lay here and pray. You can't start messing with your iPad. I can't check my, ID, my IG. You can't check your IG. Oh. You have to get up. When, when I wake up, use, it's so weird because since the um, last 48 hours, the Holy Spirit's been waking me up at 2.53. Mm, so I've been getting up at 2.53 every morning for the last 48 hours. Wow. And I'm like, what is up with this 2.53? <laughs> like I look at, and well, it's three days now because this morning I was like, 2.53 again? And I could say, I got seven more minutes. <laughs> got seven more minutes. But the Holy Spirit was like, no, no, get up. I think you're just teaching yourself to respond to God mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not letting your flesh do what it wants to do. Exactly. Was that 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27? He says, you know, run this race as if mm -hmm. to win. Yeah. And it said, I'm not just shadow boxing and beating the air. Mm -hmm. I, I, I like the Amplified. It says, I beat my body yes. and I make, make it, it do, do what, what yes. it don't want to exactly. do. Yeah. I don't want to give up. I'm mm -hmm. so tired. So sleep is controlling you. Mm -hmm. And in other areas of your life, you're controlled I'm too. sleepy. I would never lie. Yeah. I'm sleepy. It takes me. So, and that's the point yes. I, we were getting to. It takes me seven minutes to wake up. Mm. So when I started this morning writing and I thought about it, I said, yeah, usually I get up at three and by 307, I'm finally like moving mm. from my room into the bathroom. So he was saying, I want you to, to be, be here by three. Right. So ah. 
So it's like your date time. Exactly. You don't want your date being late. Exactly. Uh -huh. can't be Go late. Go get yourself together so you can get in here and give me all your attention. Right. So that right there gives me that hour and a half before I go to the gym. So within that hour and a half, I read, I read my reading plans. I have so many different reading plans. Mm -hmm. I read, I'm reading three books right now um, and I'm journaling, but the last 25 minutes is nothing but straight worship. Mm. I literally, um, for the first How hour and 10 minutes. Hmm? How long do you stay in there? For about an hour and 30 minutes. So by, um, 4.30, I'm like ready to come out, get dressed, and head to the gym. Okay. And um, I just lay prostrate for 20 minutes. I don't move, and I just worship, hands out, feet out, just prostrate before God. And I lay there, and I have these same songs, and some days it's songs, some days it's prayers. It might mm -hmm. be Cindy Trim, it might be Sade mm -hmm. Ibuko mm -hmm. or whoever, but I try to really and engulf my spirit with the spirit of the living God before I leave out of my house because mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen as soon as I open my door. Someone could be literally where I live by the beach. Someone could literally be at my front door when right, I right. walk out of the door. Right. So um, it's and, and then in the gym, you know, we're in this time of COVID. We're in a time of, of just diverse times. I have, I've been so far healthy. I got a little sick last year, but so far I've been healthy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And my spiritual growth is so important. And um, in ending that, I'm a seer. Mm -hmm, and one mm -hmm. thing that I never, ever want the living God to take from me is my ability to see. Mm. Why would I sacrifice anything to have that anointing removed from my life? Mm. When you have that type of anointing on your life, God tells you when it's going to happen. He shows you how it's going to happen before it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And then he tells you when it's about to happen. Mm. I would never sacrifice that for no man, no car, no house. <laughs> because when you walking yeah. in what God has called you to be, the blessings follow you. Yes. The money follows you. Yes. The businesses follow you. The Everything you need so literally seeking, follows you. It's really just seeking, seeking the him kingdom first, first. Yeah. and everything else shall yeah. be rewarded and mm -hmm. added to you. And you know the problem with me and you? You what? know why people are so um, bothered okay. about you and what? I? Why? Because we make it look too easy. <laughs> do, do we make it look easy, guys? They're shaking their heads saying, yeah. <laughs> We do. We make it look too easy. <laughs> you know, you know, when my heart was the last heartbreak I could think of I had, and we, we can go back even two or even three. <laughs> I'm, I'm being funny, but literally, these are years by, and times apart, you guys, but um, the Lord was so with me, you know? And I remember I, I jumped up and went to Hawaii, like, I'm just going to Hawaii. I left whatever I was feeling there. I, I, I figured out this way I could do like this five-day fast, mm -hmm. and I literally will give something over to God and receive all that he gives me, and it just learned, to, I learned to get over things yes. quickly, Very. and so I could linger, I could talk, I learned to stop talking about it, you know, you will be like, we're not even going to talk about that yeah. anymore, yeah. and we don't talk about it anymore, mm -hmm. and, and being unbothered, I'm like, I have to be about my father's business, yeah. whatever that was, whoever that was, whatever was sent, was trying to detour me right. from my destiny. Right. It was the distraction. It was the distraction. It couldn't help me advance on this journey. Yeah. If God's going to bring a man, that man is going to enhance where we are in our life Uplift. with the Lord. Right. It's going to help our purpose. We have something we have to do together. Right. I remember when you... Um, you blessed, uh, and I, we, we just went to this Valentine's dinner oh. together. Was it so good? Mm. I loved your letter. <laughs> that letter, you it could, was so I cute. Was like, I was like, well, let me read what my, my letter says. You, Trey. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Trey wrote you the best it was letter, so sweet. and he was talking about how you you ignited them, and you you. But somebody has to ignite you who's already there. Right. Somebody has to bring you in. Right. And that day, you called out. Tara and Monique, and you prayed over her, and it was so awesome to watch at your church the 
power of God. And then you come in the door with your little ladybugs and God is breaking them down and praying yeah. for them and loving them. How can you be bothered you can't. when you're setting captives free? Right, you How can't. can you be bothered when you're putting life into somebody? Right. How can you be bothered when you have all this to do and you're launching someone into their purpose? It is the most joyful thing in the world. And so I can't be discouraged and bothered at the same time. I have to let that thing go. And I have to embrace this thing that's called life. And yeah. we're giving life to others through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so when we learned that, I, I thought it was so amazing to just see, like, we don't have to accept what the world's throwing at us. No. And I love that. And it's so amazing to know I can keep my peace. I don't have to give you my peace. Yep. You, and people say, well, what if you're married? I say, you could be in that household, mm -mm. and they can be in the cuckoo basement, right. and you can still be in peace. Yeah. You don't have to fight with them. No. You don't have to fuss. You don't have to argue. No. If they're complaining, you can speak life. Right. If so what's going to happen is they're either going to get right, right, or they're going to get left. left. Yeah. They can't stay with the light is shining. Let your light put out the darkness. Yeah. Now, I remember, uh, Rev, this uh, friend of mine, we went to a funeral when, and I guess the whole family didn't, care for him or something, I, and he was starting to get discouraged. And I said, what are you doing? Well, you know, they say, I, I, I don't want to talk about what they say, wait a minute. I was like, you carry the light of Jesus in you. I said, go, we're going to go to Ross, we're going to get all these gifts and gift bags. We're going to make them real pretty. And when they see you, you give each one of them yeah. a gift. We're walking in there, and I didn't have the term we I'm bothered. Yes. We're walking in here with the light. Wow. We're walking in here. I said, let your light so shine for me. So shine yes. that they shall see your good That's works. Good. Let them be unbothered yes. that you have peace. Because if you walk in with your head down, they know they got you. Yeah. If you walk in scurrying, they know they got you. Yeah. There's no no joy in that. There's no power in that. There's no peace in that. Yeah. Get up, put your head back up, comb your hair. Calm your hair. Put on your best outfit yeah. and go and yeah. let God use you. Yeah. And it came to the point where like, his sister was so mad. She said, you just come in here at the end. Like, you didn't do anything. Like, you didn't leave a mess years ago. And then he handled that in love. And I was like, hmm, I had to stay out of that one because I had to let them handle whatever they had to handle. But the great thing about it was he was able to keep his peace. But he was about to not. So right. you have to link up with somebody like a, a Reverend Deborah Manns and a, a prophetess TNT who can actually impart something and show right. you how it's done. Yeah. So we do, it's, we may make it look like it's, it's not, like we're not bothered, but there's sometimes, you know, we going, we go through, we get attacked a lot. A lot. We have a lot of things happening. We have a yeah. lot of responsibilities. You know, we have a lot of things we carry. So that's why you get somebody where iron sharpens iron. Right. Why would I get somebody who can't sharpen me? Right. The Bible says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. If she tells me, sis, you're tripping, you need to repent, <laughs> then I believe her. You know, if I make a mistake, I need to apologize because this thing here is God made. This is real. And it's not that you're not going to go through circumstances and situations. Right. It's who are you going through it with? Yeah. God wants you to go through with people that love you and care about you, believe about you, believe you, put you back on track with purpose. Right. So I, I, it's not that. It's not that we don't ever have feelings, but it's like, I just knew, get up. I don't owe anybody an explanation. Right. I don't need to tell you why we broke up. Right. I don't need to tell you my side of the story. Nope. I don't need to unveil. And when all the DMs start coming, hey, sis, how's your family? I'm like, family's Great. good. Oh, okay. How's your husband? I'm like, not married. Oh, oh my goodness, what happened? I'm like, God is good. I, 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 it's, it's short, sweet. I don't owe you an explanation. Right. I didn't right. owe anybody an explanation. Nope. When I got there, I went on, and I, I, God restored me so fast because did. I didn't have to get anybody's approval yeah. anymore. I don't have to explain myself. No shame. I was like, it already looked messy. This make it work even worse, God. And God said, this is where I get the glory. God. Exactly. Ah, yeah. Getting the glory. Yeah. And I know this year was a big year for you because God did so much, and he's doing more, even more. Yeah. I'm praying God send you more help. Woo. You need qualified, yeah. you need to, where, where, where people that are going to be there to help ele elevate the, the calling and care and share about, share your, Man. your purpose. Yeah. We're right now working on, um, another facility. Mm. So God is just doing amazing Amen. things, amazing things. And we are just moving forward. But the biggest thing for me, I was just telling the church on Wednesday for Ash Wednesday service 
before, it doesn't matter how much money I have now. Right. I would let all of that go to continue to serve God because without mm. God, I wouldn't have it. I literally wouldn't. I wouldn't live where I live. I wouldn't drive what I drive. I wouldn't be. See, it's different from before when I was vain and, and didn't care. Right. And now it's like it matters because I know who gave it to me. Oh, yes. God gave, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where I would be, literally. And I'm not just saying it just to say it. Yes, right. I wake up every morning and I say, Lord, I thank you. Because literally when I felt the deliverance and when I knew I was delivered and I really 110% gave myself over to God, mm -hmm. not only did he heal my mind, he healed my heart. Mm. I was able to forgive myself yes, and I didn't Lord. feel, you know, that ugly person and that angry um, mm. envious person anymore. Mm. I really felt like I had gained spiritual health. My health spiritually became better. Yes. And now from year to year to year, I really don't allow. And that's why you know me. I don't have friends. You're the only female, mm -hmm. not in a negative way, right. female friend that I be around. Other right. than that, right. I don't let people come around me. You can't come to my house. You're the Definitely. only <laughs> woman that has ever been to my house. I don't do that because I understand that everything I do has to stay guarded. Yes. I don't let people know where I live. No. I don't do any. I don't post on Facebook, Instagram. My business is no longer up for public opinion. Right. 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 So when you become unbothered, you don't care how many likes you got. You don't have to pose in the mirror with your selfies and all that. You don't have to I know, do I've been that. I'm trying to get you to take more selfies. No. She gonna take more <laughs> selfie. She had that. She's so beautiful. I'd be like, come on, sis, let's take a picture. Ah, yeah. And when she like, tell on. me, I try, and then I look. She's so like, cute. Nah. She's so <laughs> It's all that beauty, but she understands where it comes from. It comes from it comes the, the Lord. Lord. And I'm really trying, but the thing that I really want to portray is to be unbothered means to just be okay where you are, regardless of the situation. Yes. Regardless of how you think, what you feel, just know that God is doing it for you. I just preached a sermon a couple of weeks ago entitled, um, He's the Keeper of My Soul. Mm -hmm. And I had to understand, like, God is really the keeper of my soul. He is. If I let go of everything I am right now, I would go crazy. I'm not lying. I would flip my wig. My braids will be shriveled up. They will be gone, <laughs> literally. Because without him, I know that I wouldn't be stable. I know that I will fall into toxic injury and negative people and gossip. And it would be easy. If you it, talked about mm -hmm. the text message. Yes. When people text me and, you, and I get ready to read it, it's negative. I don't even desire to keep reading it. Neither. There's no desire Neither. to keep reading Ooh. it. Some people be like. They want to go through <laughs> it and repeat it and read it again and read it again and read it. I don't want to see any of that. I don't want to see that. You know, mm -hmm. like you just said something in that uh, Cody Carn song comes to me. Nothing else will do. I just want I you. I just want you. Yeah. And, um, you know, we just put out our Lifeline TNT uh, first CD and, and we're amazing. working on the second one. So you'll get our Unbothered song on that one. Um, in April, it releases April 1st. Literally, some of the songs we were saying were like, you are all I need, you are all my heart desire, you are you are my everything, you're faithful like the rising sun. Like it's gonna come in up every morning, it's there, it's committed, it's dedicated, it's gonna keep on. I, he, it was like everything was about the love of Jesus. Yeah. So this, this new CD is called Ahava, the oh, love of God. Yeah. I love and that's it. the Hebrew word for love. Yeah. So Ahava, mm -hmm. the love of God. I love and it. it's like, you guys, once you have Jesus, you have everything. And I remember I had to get tested with things. If you can't go through the test, you're not really genuine. No. You're not authentic. Mm -hmm. So I had to know when what it was like to have a lot. And when mm -hmm. I had a lot, when I served God, which I did. And then when the husband said he didn't want to be a father or husband anymore, and I had five children and he left, I had to see what it was like to serve God in my, my I went from 6,000 square feet to 600 square feet exactly. and living in my store exactly. with my kids. And I was still worshiping praising him God. and praising yeah. him. And I let him be my deliverer mm -hmm. and my way maker. And it was so amazing to see how he, much he, he loved me. Even where I was at, I knew he was going to bring me out. I knew this was just a, a temporary moment. This was a, a pit experience for a moment. I was, I'm on my way to the palace. He cannot lie to us, you know, sis. And, and he's, it's going to be better. This is temporary. And, and we 
have power over this and authority yeah. over this. And it became genuinely tested. And during that time, you know, there was men that came to me that were my clients that were saying, oh, let me put you up. Oh, I have an extra BMW. Do you need, your car is in the shop. Let me get that. I was like, no, right. no, 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 no. If someone's going to do it, God's going to do it. Exactly. I don't want what you have for me. That costs me too much. No. Way too much. And then I could pass that test. And then there's the test of authority. When you're in authority, how do you handle people? Yeah. You know, there's so many things we had to pass so God can say, okay, this is authentic. This one I can feel and pour in. This one is going to remain. This one is here for life. Yeah. Sometimes you just want God. People want him for the loaves and fishes. Yeah. God, what they can you do for me? It. Get me out of this. Get, heal me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm, I'm out. No, no, no. We are now merged. Right. He is mine and I am his. Yeah. There is this, that love thing in Song of Solomon we carry where right. God is our everything. If, it, it would kill me. It would kill you to be separated right. from the love of God. Now. Right. And our trials and tribulations brought us through it those things. Oh, yeah. the reflection yeah. on him is so beautiful. It will, it will kill me. It, it, I couldn't even imagine. I always know, and you always know this, as long as we got Jesus, everything is all right. <laughs> <laughs> we got this. We do. Because we know he's faithful. He is. You're going to make me cry. I know. Uh, so much. You know I'm a cry baby. I know. Uh, <laughs> so you're going to make me cry. I'm going to start crying too. Just he is so faithful. Even to know where we are right now. Look at where we were six get, years ago. I know. We were look, both look, like in a very weird place. Right? And then look at where we were even beginning of last year to where what yeah, happened, man. all the miracle signs and wonders he did. Yeah. While people were going down, God was elevating us yeah. as he's faithful. He's faithful even in the midst of COVID. He's yeah. faithful in the middle of your divorce. He's faithful yeah. when your kids don't want to talk to you. He's faithful when everything seems like it's falling apart. He's faithful when your business is falling apart. Yeah. He's faithful. He's faithful. He's faithful. Yeah. He just loves us so good. He does. But you have to, but you have to really make up in your mind to be honest and transparent with yourself because God knows you and you we may put on a front for other people and right. we may lie in front of other people but God is not going to bless that mm. because I tell people all the time if you are being fake and phony and faking it till you make it in front of people but God sees you how do you think you are representing God when you say you are a believer of God? Mm. You're not a believer of God. You are a devil and the truth is not in you. <laughs> and there is so many different stories we could read in our Bible every day where people came falsely about their story. Look, <laughs> don't get me started because I start preaching up here. Okay, but, preach, um, preach. You know, we know. Got like two minutes, preach. <laughs> I'm going to save it for another day, but... And we, you know, we know so many different stories. We could just read in the Bible, you know, where Abraham and Sarah, you know, lied. And, <laughs> and they almost took down a whole army of people because he said that that was his sister. Right. You know, so. Close up everybody's womb so, and right, so cancer. It, you know, when we, God sees everything we do. Mm. So for me, you know, hashtag unbothered is mm -hmm. to really be transparent and really be a true, true righteous man and woman of God. Mm -hmm. Don't fake it. Don't fake if it. you really want God to do something amazing with you, mm -hmm. let go of your foolishness. Mm. Let go of your foolishness. Yeah. Hashtag unbothered. Tag us. Prophetess TNT, Tara Nicole Tarver, and Reverend Deborah Manns. We are here. We are so excited about our book, about everything God is doing with this unbothered movement where he is literally giving you his peace and you learn how to control your emotions and stay in purpose, on purpose, and intentional. We love what God is doing. I'm so glad that you're here. I look forward to us doing more Q&As and stuff on this topic. It's going to be really good. As you know, there might be a Netflix movie or something. You never know. You know how we do. That would be so, good. <laughs> okay. But I love what God is doing in your life, too, because you got to listen to this segment. You got to think and know some steps that will help you get to that place. Let me just pray quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, each and every person in the sound of my voice, Lord, that you've given them their, your peace, Father. I pray it be in fused to them, that they let the peace of God rest and rule in them, Father, that they would not surrender their peace, God. They would not give you up for anything and anyone. Lord, let your relationship with them be merged, Lord, that they would love you with all their heart, soul, might, and strength. They will serve you in all that they do and remember you in every conversation and everything that they do 
Lord Jesus, may be bring you glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus. I'm Prophetess TNT. You're watching Amen. Supernatural Lifeline Revelations. Remember that your timeline is somebody else's lifeline. So please tag, share, click a thumbs up, and invite. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Follow us at Prophetess Taryn. God bless.